All right, so TLDR for this video, if you want more money, don't ask for a raise at your job, just switch jobs. So a lot of us think just because we get a job that we'll get a raise every year. In reality, that's just not true. A lot of jobs don't even offer a raise every year. Instead, they'll offer more amenities to you. So instead of giving you more money, they'll just give you more time off. Or instead of giving you more money, they'll just give you more flexibility in your schedule. So a lot of these companies aren't even offering raises anymore. And if you're not getting a raise every year, you are literally losing money due to inflation. US inflation is about 2% on average. The last month in January of 2019, it was 2.3%. The average salary raises that people get in the United States is about 3.1%. So your total raise is really 1.1%. Now there are some industries that offer a higher raise than others. So in software, I've seen anywhere between seven to 10% raises, but that's still nothing compared to what you could get by just switching companies. Working and climbing up a corporate ladder is not the way to make more money unless you really intend on somehow making it to CEO or CFO or CTO or whatever it is that you're trying to do. You don't make big gains in money by climbing the ladder. You do that by just switching companies. Now here's the thing, you might be able to get six, seven, eight, maybe even 10% of a salary raise working at a job, but you're not going to get that every single year unless you're working at one of the huge companies that can afford to do that. A lot of companies have been reducing what they call their uh, variable pay budget, which is this area of their budget that they use to give people pay increases every single year. And companies are reducing this budget smaller and smaller and smaller. And it, again, they're instead just offering you more amenities. Let's say you get a 10% raise, but that's over the course of three years. And every time a year goes by, that's 2% inflation. And you're actually only getting a 4% raise. You worked really hard for those three years, but it's not as much as you would think. Switching jobs, you could get anywhere from 15 to 20 to 25 to 35, even double your salary just by switching jobs. In fact, I've done this. Let me walk you through the numbers. My very first programming job was $18 an hour. I worked there for about eight months and then I got a full-time PHP job. I went from $18 an hour to $50,000 a year. Now, if you do the math, which is when you double the hourly rate and add 4%, that would be your salary. I did that and going from $18 an hour to $50,000 a year is a 35.5% salary increase just by switching jobs after staying somewhere for eight months. I did it again at my next job. I went from 50K to $65,000. That's a 30% increase in salary. Now, if I had stayed there and worked my way up, I maybe would have gotten 53K, 55K, 58K, and then eventually maybe 60K. And again, I worked there for just about a year. So that's 35% salary increase in one year, 30% salary increase after that. And then I went from 65K to 75K, which again, is a 15.5% increase. Now, here's the thing with that. I understand it's, it's, you can't always job hop because then you're just gonna be seen as a job hopper and no one's gonna hire you because they think that you're just gonna leave as soon as more, there's more money involved. And I, I get that. So there's like a couple questions you should ask yourself. And I wanna talk about how long you should stay at each job before you bounce if you want more money. So when should you switch jobs? When do you know it's time? When do you think that you've been there long enough to where you can get away with going for a new job without being looked at in a negative light? So we all know that the shorter you've been there, the worse it looks if you wanna switch jobs. It just, it just doesn't, it's not gonna look good on your, on your resume. So what I do, and I'm not saying that you guys have to do this, but what I do is if I work a job that I absolutely hate and I join it and I realize it's not for me and I'm like, holy crap, I gotta get out of here because this has happened to me before, that job just never existed on my resume. The job before that did. Now, if it's your first job, it's even more difficult. So what you could do is you could take your start date and just move that out to make it look like you've been there six months. Let me explain so I can give you some context. I accepted a job offer for a company and I worked there literally less than a day. It was a remote job and if you backed away from your computer, you had to type a message in Slack and you had to say, stepping away, going to the bathroom, stepping away, taking some cold medicine, stepping away, I need to do this, going to lay down on the couch to do work. So moving my computer won't be able to respond for 35 seconds. It was really micromanaging. And I was like, there's no way I can work a remote job that is this micromanagement. Like, why do they even offer remote? That job never existed. 
on my resume whatsoever. Now, if it was your first job and you absolutely hate it and you're stuck and you feel like, well, I need this experience before I can leave, but I absolutely hate it, then maybe take that start date and just bump it forward a little bit. I'm not saying that you gotta do that, but that's probably what I would do just because uh, my peace of mind is really important to me and I'm not just gonna work a job that I hate every day. I'm gonna figure out a way out of it. I'm gonna break some rules. So that three to six months mark is probably the most tricky part of switching a job. I've switched jobs at around eight months before, but I think six, mo six months is probably the, the borderline safe area that you could job hop. If you can manage to make your job to one year, you don't have anything to worry about. You can safely job hop, you can safely jump to another company, and when they say, why do you why are you looking to switch? You can just say, I'm looking for more responsibility. What about if you don't want to switch jobs because you don't want more money? Well, there are a lot of other benefits to switching a job. You don't stagnate. You don't stagnate in your skills. You expand your skill set and you're forced to learn new people's processes and workflows. And I feel, oh man, that's just corporate jargon right there. But you're forced to learn how other companies do things so that when you switch jobs again, which you should, then you'll be able to take all of those different workflows that you've experienced them, condense them down, and maybe suggest improvements to your new workplace that you're going to. Now, you also get to expand your network. You get to know more people, and you know, as long as you don't burn the bridge, if that's important to you, you might bring back some passion in work. You might enjoy what you're doing again. Maybe what you got hired for was fun at first, and then they totally changed your job, and you just hated what you're doing. I've talked about this before, a few times about how to negotiate a salary, but the number one thing that you want to remember when negotiating a salary is to never say a number first. Do not give the number first. Let me walk you through a scenario of why giving your number first will hurt you. You can inadvertently undercut yourself. Let's say you go to a job and they're ready to pay you $90,000 and they say, hey, what are you thinking in terms of salary? And you say $45,000. They just got the biggest deal in history on you or even worse, they might think that this is what this guy values his skills at. He must not know that much. He must not, he must not know as much as we think he does. And you just make yourself look bad. When you have to discuss numbers, just say, well, I was curious what your budget is for this position as I'm wondering if we're on the same page when it comes to compensation. If you give your number first, you hand them the playbook. And this is, the, this is like the, the game part. This is, yes, corporate is a game in general, but this is the real big game part. It takes a lot of presence of mind. I know when you're in the interview and you really want that job, and especially when you need the money, if you don't have a job, you don't wanna mess it up, right? You, you just need money, so you're more willing to just kind of go with the flow. And I know it can be nerve wracking, especially when you're so used to just, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate all this. But you gotta put your foot down here. If you've ever wondered why some of your coworkers and some of your colleagues that have lower tier jobs than you get paid the same amount, if not more money than you, it's because they did that. It's because during the negotiation, during that really awkward make or break what it feels like moment, they said, well, I was wondering what yours is. What's your number? And then they went back and forth and they bartered and they fought for it. And that's why, that's just, that's your only time. That's when you make that big salary gain. Cause it's not gonna happen again. You're not gonna go from 50 to 75 at the job. You're not gonna go from 75 to 95 at the job. You're, you're gonna go back to getting those incremental salary raises. So that's your time. That's your time to make big money moves. There was a lady at my last job. She worked there for like 10 years. I worked there for about a year and I was getting paid more money than her. And it's kind of uh, this dumb kind of, uh, good old boys mentality that you don't tell people what you make and that's kind of forced on you by corporate because they don't want people internally to fight and be like well why does he get more money i've been here longer well the truth is they fought for it they negotiated better than you and that's just it is what it is they convinced them and you didn't and you settled and then you never fought for your raise that you deserved over the past 10 years. So she had been there for 10 years. I was making more money than her right off the bat. She was more experienced than me. She had been part of the company from the ground up. She went and she tattletold, tattletailed. She told on me basically. And then they brought me in there like, Josh, why are you telling people your salary? And I was like, because I don't think there's anything to hide. Um, I negotiated better and that's just the reality of it. And if you think you undercut her, don't get mad at me. You know, you should feel bad because she found out that you're undercutting her and just pay her more money like you should. But this is how companies play that game. And man, she was pissed. She was like, what? And you say, well, I don't even make that much, Josh. And I, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. She's like, oh, okay, well, I'm talking to management. And then I realized I kind of messed up. But at the same time, I didn't really care. Let's say for just a second that for some reason they put you into a position 
where they won't give their number. They just refuse to say it and they just keep flipping it on you no matter what you do. There are a couple options. You can say, well, I'm just not really sure. It's more about what I'm doing and who I'm working with that matters to me. And then you flip it back on them and say, what were you thinking? Or you can give a number and you can do the old poker face and you can bluff. And if you give a number, you better give 15, 10K at least more than you are making because they will undercut you. The only time I have not been undercut when asking for a salary is for a job that was willing to pay me a lot more money. And the reason I figured that out was because they gave me my request really, really easily. And I was like, hmm, this is just a little bit more than I wanted. And they just handed it off to me, which means they were willing to pay me a lot more money because that was too easy. If it's too easy, you, you know, you should, hmm, what's going on? You should raise an eyebrow a little bit. Ordinarily, they will undercut you. They will give you 5K less than what you asked for and you will have to fight for that 5K back. And then finally you will settle. It's like going into a pawn shop. You should go into a pawn shop and have five different numbers to kind of fall back on. Josh, what about if they call your previous employer and they ask and, and they say, well, what was his last salary? Okay, in some states, this is actually illegal. If they bring that up later down the line and they said, well, you said you got paid 65,000 a year and your last company said that you were getting paid 55,000 a year. Well, just because they valued me at that number doesn't mean that's what I'm worth right now. There were multiple factors at play here, such as them not having the budget to pay me. I think it's a, a little bit irrelevant. I think you need context for that. And I think I'm actually worth $65,000. Yeah, uh, I said that I got paid more than what I did, but this is salary negotiations and I'm sure you know how that goes. I'm sure you can see it from my side. We're both playing the game here. Now, are you willing to meet me at this salary or not, right? Like that takes a lot of guts to say. They will do a couple things. They'll either say, okay, well, we don't believe in uh, lying and you know, whatever, we think that's really unethical and they'll point you at the door and they'll tell you to leave. Or, you know, they, they might nod their head and be like, I think that's reasonable, I think that's fair. We were just curious about why you said that and they gave you the job offer and you're good to go. Anyways, that's this video. Asking for a raise is just gonna get you micro increments that barely compete with inflation versus job hopping, which is gonna get you that big money, those big money raises. Um, try to keep it to a minimum though. You don't wanna be seen as a job hopper, but again, it's kind of up to you. It's kind of up to what you want. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, click subscribe, click like, leave a comment down below. I have some resumes and cover letters down there. If you'd like to book a one-on-one -on -one with me about how to open a business, freelance, build a brand, whatever it is, we can talk about it. I'd appreciate it if you check those links out and I will see you guys in the next one.